My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable two-year-old little boy. This week, I'm sharing four simple and budget-friendly breakfast for dinner ideas. I'll make sure to leave all the recipes in the description box. Okay, so the first meal that I'm sharing is breakfast hot dogs. So I like this particular brand of sausages because they taste like little Smokies. I am just going to cook these in my air fryer. All right, I'm gonna pop these in my air fryer. Okay, the sausages are ready. I let them um, cook for about 10 minutes. Now I'm going to work on the eggs. Okay, I've got some butter going in the pan and I am just going to pour in two eggs that I have beat here in my bowl. I added some black pepper to it. No salt because I feel like the salt and cheese that I'm going to be adding is going to be salty enough. So I'm just going to let these cook. It's important that you don't actually scramble these eggs. You just kind of want to let them uh, sit and get set up kind of like an omelet. It's going to be easier to put the eggs on your um, hot dogs if they're not completely scrambled up. Okay, so I've got our breakfast hot dogs all assembled. This is Howard's plate and he has the eggs on there, the cheese, bacon, and salsa. And then this is my plate. I have the same thing without salsa. And then I made a side of seasoned fries. Um, these are actually from Walmart. I picked them up on a recent haul, my first time getting them. And they're pretty good. They just taste like a seasoned fry, nothing special. It said batter mix and that sounded interesting to me, but it's just like a seasoned French fry. And then the buns that we are using are brioche buns because um, this breakfast hot dog is pretty substantial. Not sure how a traditional hot dog bun would hold up. These work just fine, slightly sweet, and then they're split, you know, right on top, so good. And then, like I said, I'm using a smoked sausage instead of a regular hot dog. Um, I just feel like the smoked sausage tastes more breakfasty than a regular hot dog. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, I am making a savory sausage and kale quiche. So you are going to need a deep dish pie crust and I did uh, par-bake the crust. You can see the fork holes in there. So I par-baked it and, and that's in order to make sure that the crust is not soggy. I've got some onions here, some eggs. I've got some breakfast sausage. I've got some freshly grated Swiss cheese, half and half, and kale. I'm not gonna be using any salt with this. I feel like there's enough salt in the uh, sausage and cheese, but I am going to be using this white pepper Different flavor than black pepper. My husband's not a huge fan of black pepper. This is actually spicier than black pepper and it doesn't have that um, kind of assertive taste that black pepper has. So I'll be using some of this as well. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start off by cooking my breakfast sausage and onion. And while my sausage is cooking, I'm going to um, mix up my eggs and half and half. So my sausage and onions are cooked through. Now I'm just gonna add in my kale and let that wilt a little bit. Okay, so now it's time to start putting the quiche together. I've got the majority of meat in my pie shell. I probably have like a cup that I did not add. And now you're gonna add cheese. I'm using Swiss cheese. Use whatever cheese you'd like. Add as much cheese or as little cheese as you want. And now I'm going to add my egg mixture. 
Okay, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees, and I am going to let this bake for about 45 to 55 minutes or until that egg is set. So here's the quiche. I ended up baking it for 50 minutes. Let me get in a little closer for you. So here's what it looks like. It is so quick and easy to make, so tasty. On the side, I am serving cheesy potatoes. And I actually picked these up from Aldi. It's been a while back ago, um, but I just followed the directions on the back. It's a quick little skillet side. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight. And we will see y'all next time. For dinner today, I am making French toast waffles. Now this is something that I first had when I was a freshman in college. So in my bowl, I have one egg and I am adding some milk and adding some cinnamon and a little bit of vanilla. And I'm just gonna whisk this up. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my waffle and quickly dip it in the mixture on both sides. And you don't have to worry about your waffle, you know, being thawed out because they're not exactly totally frozen when you take them out of the freezer. So you're just gonna um, get that excess batter off and then you're just gonna put it in your griddle. So I've got my griddle um, buttered and heated up. And I'm just gonna cook these on both sides like a pancake until it's nice and golden brown. So here are the French toast waffles and they smell so good. I am serving the waffles with some bacon and then just some um, scrambled eggs and maple syrup. Normally I would put butter on my um, French toast but there's so much butter on here already just from the skillet and from frying them that I don't need any additional butter. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. So for dinner tonight, I am making bacon pizza quiche. So I have a 12 inch pizza pan here and then I have one Pillsbury pie crust that I thawed out and then I rolled it out a little bit and then I put it in my pizza pan, and then I tried to, as you can see, kind of fold up the edges a little bit, just like a regular pizza. So I am going to pop this in the oven for about five to 10 minutes and let it par bake a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to be working on my filling. So while my crust is baking, I've got my eggs in the bowl, and then I'm just gonna add in my sour cream. and you're just gonna give it a good stir. And you're gonna add in some parsley. Okay, so my pie crust is out of the oven. I let it cool for about uh, maybe 10 minutes or so. Now I'm just taking my cooked chopped bacon and I'm just spreading it over the crust. And you're gonna do the same thing with your cheese. I'm using cheddar, but feel free to use whatever cheese you'd prefer. And now you're going to take your sour cream and egg mixture, and you're just going to um, very carefully pour it on top. Okay, so I have the mixture carefully spread out. I am going to pop this in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes or until that egg mixture is completely set. Okay, so here is the bacon pizza quiche, trying to get in here so you all can see that it is completely set. You see all of that cheese in there. I sprinkled a little bit more parsley on top and then I'm serving it with some fruit, Granny Smith apple, and a mandarin orange. I don't normally eat fruit for dinner and I don't know why, I need to do it more often. And then here is the um, quiche in the pizza pan. I just wanted you to see that it did not run over on the sides or anything like that, it set completely. 
So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight. If you all like this video, please make sure to give us a thumbs up. That way I'll know to do another video like this sometime soon. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you all next time.